Chapter 981, A Lesson As Charlie came in front of Tang Xiao's group of four, he shot a cold look at them. He had encountered the likes of people who acted mysteriously and covered their faces to hide their identities, yet none of them had been as fearful as these guests. After all, these people had the ability to infiltrate his bedroom without being spotted, meaning they had the ability to directly kill him in his sleep. More so that many big incidents had happened recently. One of which was the destruction of the Dark Wind Agency branch in Saipan that had secretly claimed all the lives of the agency personnel, although Saipan's highest official was said to be the final suspect and mastermind, there was no motive that linked him with it. Furthermore, the confusing fact was that the top official of Saipan had been on vacation, yet didn't come back alive. Maybe these people in front of me also have the ability to destroy a regional branch. The thought came to his mind, making him apprehensive yet again. Then, he asked in a deep voice, To think that you can infiltrate a dark wind agency location to arrive outside my room without getting spotted at all. You guys are amazingly able. But I still demand your answer. Exactly what is your real purpose in coming here? I don't buy your reasoning for coming here as to just buy intel since there's no need to infiltrate this place so secretly, nor would anyone stop you if you openly came here. You are asking why we came here so secretly? While pointing to the bronze mask worn on his face, Tang Xiao lightly said, one is to hide our identities, while second, it's completely unnecessary if you're really our enemy since you won't have any chance to fight back if we really want to kill you. So, is my answer enough proof? This made Charlie fall into silence for a moment. Then, he nodded while waving and ordering the rest. You guys draw back. None of you are to come here unless I summon you. Dozens of strong men quickly retreated, leaving only the man called Yale, who stood next to Charlie with a vigilant attitude, guarding against any sneak attacks from Tang Xiao's group. Gentlemen, can you wait for me in the living room first? asked Charlie. I'll immediately come over to see you once I'm done changing my clothes. No problem. Tang Xiao nodded. A few minutes later, after Charlie had changed clothes, he arrived at the reception room. He shot a look at Tang Xiao sitting on the sofa savoring some tea. Then, he smiled and said, What should I call you, mister? Call me Tang. He's Sing, answered Tang Xiao lightly. Charlie glanced at Singluin and immediately nodded. Mr. Tang, Mr. Sing, may I know what information you'd like to buy that would even make you visit me so late at night? The Dark Wind Agency is the largest intelligence agency in the world and we can provide anything of concern worldwide to our buyers. Certainly, our Bangkok's branch has the collection of our intel work in the region, which is under my jurisdiction. You can rest assured for the reliability and authenticity of our intel. I've already heard of your agency's resounding fame. Tang Xiao nodded and said, Since Mr. Charlie has spoken about the deal, then I won't beat around the bush about our purpose either. I need intel about the Dark Shaman clan in this country. In particular, intel on the eldest prince of the Dark Shaman clan, Sinquo. The more detailed it is, the better. Charlie's complexion shifted. He suddenly shot a look at Singluin and grinned, Well, I think I know the real identity of this Mr. Singh. If my guess is correct, you should be young Master Singluin, right? His guess made Singluin's expression change. He slowly took off the bronze mask on his face and indifferently said, Your guess is correct. I'm indeed Singluin. I can tell that my big brother has also come here recently to buy intel about me from you. It's very likely that he wants to know whether I'm already in Bangkok or not. Clap, clap. Charlie clapped and applauded as he said, You're correct. Your big brother, Mr. Sinquo, has indeed been here to buy intel about you. It's just unfortunate that we were only able to guess that you had left Bangkok and the country, despite how good our intelligence network is. We haven't been able to figure out where you left from either. Mr. Charlie, you've correctly guessed about the purpose of me and my big brother. But there are things that your Dark Wind Agency can't get involved with, said Singluin. We came here this time to do nothing but buy intel from you. 
state your price and we'll pay you right away. Charlie pondered for a moment and then said, $8 million for the Darkwind Agency to sell you this particular intel. It's worth the price, I think. All right. Singluin took out his cell phone and said, I'll transfer the amount directly to your account. However, Tang Shou stretched his hand to stop him and lightly said, I think your big brother has been monitoring all your accounts in Thailand. He can quickly find out the flow of cash from your account. Eight million dollars is nothing to me, so I'll pay for it. With that said, he used his mobile phone to transfer eight million dollars to Charlie's account. Then he said, the money has been sent, so give us the intel, Mr. Charlie. Also, I'm sure your Darkwind agency has an outstanding reputation given the fact that it has become the world's largest intelligence agency. I'd hate it if you sell us out to others like you just did with Synquo after we've struck a deal. The statement made Charlie look dull before his expression dramatically shifted, causing him to instantly realize that he had already leaked secret information of a customer who bought Intel. Further, he never thought that Tang Xiao could actually pinpoint this issue and later point it out to him. It's a mistake of mine indeed, said Charlie with a dead serious expression. But you can rest assured, the intel about the dark shaman clan you just bought won't be sold again to anyone. Tang Xiao let out a noncommittal smile and said again, well, your guarantee is nothing but a joke without enough benefits. It's understandable of course but I hope you can understand that the ending will be very grim. Should any outside forces want to get involved in the internal struggle of the Dark Shaman Clan just to get more benefits, okay? The Dark Shaman Clan is very special indeed. Charlie nodded and said, I understand and have my discretion. I won't dare get involved. Quickly after, the intel needed by Tang Xiao and Singluin was handed over. After receiving it, they no longer stayed and quickly disappeared into the darkness without passing through the main entrance. Even though Charlie had assigned his men to secretly monitor everything, they were unable to find out how these people left. Sir Charlie called out Yale in a low voice behind Charlie while standing in a dark corner near the window and gazing outside. Charlie came back to his senses and said in a deep voice, track the account used to transfer the money immediately. I want to know who that man is. Also, inform our headquarters that the Dark Shaman Clan in Bangkok is currently in an internal struggle. It's very likely that the struggle will lead to a large-scale battle. Understood, replied Yale as he walked toward the outside. Charlie stroked his chin as light now gleamed in his eyes. Some powerful people appeared in his mind, yet he was unable to associate any of them with the man who wore the bronze mask just now. Regardless of their age, face, figure, or the terrifying power they had, none of them matched up. After half an hour, Yale returned to Charlie's side and reported, Sir Charlie, our men have checked it, but the money was transferred from an unregistered Swiss bank account, so we can't trace the true identity of the other party. Also, I've already informed headquarters about this matter as per your order. The reply from HQ is to act according to the circumstances. You can act if it's profitable, but don't attract unnecessary troubles for the agency later. Charlie creased his brows deeply and said, I already expected that the account used by that man would be an unregistered Swiss bank account, yet it never occurred to me that these people would have such a bizarre ability to come and go so freely like that at our own location. It seems like our security measures here are flawed. Yale, rebuild our security surveillance system. Make absolutely sure to cover the whole site so as to make sure nobody is able to infiltrate here so covertly in the future. Understood. I'll get it done immediately, replied Yale as he turned around and left the room. Charlie turned around and walked to the table. After pulling out a drawer, he took a black notebook from the inside and quickly flipped through a few pages. He then picked up his mobile phone to dial a certain cell phone number on it. It didn't take long before his call was picked up and a deep voice asked. What is it? Twenty million dollars and I'll sell you some more intel, said Charlie with a slightly smiling face. I'm sure you'll find this intel of the utmost importance to you. Got it. I'll tell my men to transfer it to your account right away. 
Then I'll send the intel to you immediately once I get the money, said Charlie smilingly. Having said that, he hung up and returned back to the sofa to sit down. His expression was that of smugness as he took out a Cuban cigar and happily muttered to himself. <laughs> they can fight all they like, but I'll fish the money out of them. This dark shaman clan may be a bit able and bizarre, but it's worth to take a bit of risk to make more of a profit. Well, twenty million dollars is worth it for my sweat. I'm afraid that you won't have the chance to spend it if you die, though. A faint wind blew all of a sudden, and a chilling voice came from behind Charlie. At the same time, a sharp dagger was placed on his neck. The hand with the dagger only needed a slight motion to leave a deadly wound on Charlie's neck. W who are you? Charlie's body stiffened and his heart chilled in that instant. He rarely encountered such a terrible situation that could make him scared shitless like this. Yet, he was keenly aware that the kiss of death was so close to him at this moment. Well, well, your sweat seems to have earned you quite the fortune in your private account, isn't that right? Tang An's chilling voice spoke again as she came out of the shadow. I'll give you a chance to redeem your life. Transfer all the money in your private account into mine. Otherwise, I'll kill you immediately. All right, all right. I'll transfer it to you, shouted Charlie hurriedly. But but please don't kill me. I have a lot of money and you can have all of it. You got a shit ton of money, huh? Tang and sneered and mocked him. I'll still kill you if the number doesn't satisfy me. Chapter 982 Setting a Trap Albeit with difficulty, Charlie struggled to grab his phone and used online banking apps to transfer more than $200 million to the account Tang and just gave him. After the notification was displayed on the screen, proving that there was no money left in his account, he then said with a bitter voice, Miss, I didn't see your face so I don't know who you are. I already gave you all my money, all for my life. The money from your private account is for the compensation of your own sins, sneered Tangan. You can be sure to meet your maker along with your loved ones should you dare to sell us out again. <laughs> Don't ever think that because you're a member of the Dark Wind Agency, it can deter my boss from killing you. As long as the price is right, let alone you, even all your family members and friends will be ruthlessly hunted and killed by countless people. Charlie gulped and fearfully replied, Yes, yes, yes. You're right. I'll never sell you out again. Absolutely. Then you must play your script we give you to prove it, said Tangan with satisfaction. Your performance will determine whether you can keep your shitty life. What script should I follow? asked Charlie hurriedly. You just called Sinquo, the eldest prince of the Dark Shaman. Didn't you? asked Tangan, he wants to buy the intel about us, doesn't he? Charlie said bitterly, yes. I just wanted to make a lot of money in private, so. You really had no idea how powerful the man you just wanted to sell out is, Charlie. If you did, I'm afraid that you'd be scared out of your wits after pulling such a stunt even if you gave twenty billion dollars. Tangan interrupted him coldly and lightly added. What I need you to do is to inform Sinquo that Singluin has returned to Bangkok and is now hiding in a coconut plantation about 100 kilometers to the southeast of downtown Bangkok. The owner of that plantation is a man called Swa Dequan. I know him, blurted Charlie in surprise. Do you have a grudge against him? Don't stick your nose in it, said Tangan coldly. Do what I just told you and pass it to Sinquo. Also, you must note that Cinquo's death is inevitable. Associate yourself and give him a favor, and you'll find death knocking at your door. Charlie had witnessed the mysteriousness and dreadfulness of the other party. He could only brace himself to write the information personally, sending it to Singluin via email. Everything was to keep his own life. I did what you told me to do. Can you let me go? Just as his fingers left the keyboard, he spoke and looked back, only to be dumbfounded since not even the shadow of that person was seen behind him. Was it just an illusion? That's impossible. That woman was definitely here. But, the door and windows are closed. 
They were never opened in the first place. How did she come in? How did she leave? Is she a ghost or something? Wiping off the beads of sweat on his forehead, Charlie got up and checked every corner of the room. After confirming that there really was no other person inside, only then did he feel relieved, taking a sigh of relief. As he came to the sofa, he felt weak as he took a seat. The sensation of having death knocking at the door was so intense and real, leaving him with a lingering fear up till now. No longer will I stick my nose in this shit again. I won't give a damn shit to Cinquo, nor will I get involved in anything related to this clan again even if they give me a mountain of gold. Those guys around Singluin are too dreadful and it's very easy if they want to kill me. Anyone around me is nothing but shit. They can do whatever. Charlie felt more relaxed after ruminating about this issue clearly. Don Wing District, Feather Palace Club Tang Xiao had just come back and was now holding a stack of documents as he returned to his room when his expression suddenly moved slightly, and he asked, Have you accomplished the task I gave you? A shadow flickered, and Tang An appeared in front of Tang Xiao out of thin air. Then, she respectfully reported, It's been done, Grand Master. It was as you predicted. Charlie tried to fish out more from Cinquo again for some personal gain, so I forced him to pass the fake until you prepared to Cinquo. <laughs> the Darkwind Agency may be the world's largest intelligence agency, but they have too many corrupted crooks, sneered Tang Xiao. Everything is just for money and interest to them. With too many people in their organization, it's inevitable that they are rotten and decent people in their ranks. As such, there will be numerous people who forget their own code at the prospect of profits. Their promises are worth nothing. A smile was now sported on Tang An's face as she said, Well, he has quite a fortune, Grand Master, so I forced him to transfer the money in his Swiss private account to mine. The total amount is around $240 million, which I'm going to transfer to your account later. Huh? You what? Tang Xiao's expression turned vacant. An expression between laughter and tears appeared on his face a moment after. Hey, why do I feel like all the people around me have kinda turned into fearful bandits lately? How come all of you always extort money every time I deal with the enemy? A smile appeared on Tang An's face yet again. Well, we're short on money, Grand Master. Yeah, right. You're all short on money to buy cultivation resources, huh? said Tang Xiao snappily. Yeah, it's all because we need a massive number of cultivation resources, especially pills. It's dwindling fast. Tang An nodded and said, that's why we must find ways to get more money and buy the pills from HQ. Tang Xiao couldn't help but chuckle and said, right, the world never provides free lunch. You gotta pay if you want cultivation resources. I know the annual pay given by the Everlasting Feast Hall is not decent for you all, but you guys indeed have the ability to make it up and earn yourselves quite a fortune. I won't bother with what you do as long as you don't kill innocents and rob the weak. Well, you can keep the money. We'll have more people join our ranks in the future, and everyone will be more restless to get cultivation resources. There's no harm in buying them now indeed. Thank you, Grand Master, said Tang An with a joyful expression. Spare me the courtesy, okay? Tang Xiao waved and said again. Also, don't use all the money for yourself. After you spend it on some cultivation resources, give your brother a share. As I see it, he seems to have nothing else to do except cultivation and fooling around with women. Ah, that brother of mine is indeed an exotic marvel, commented Tang and with a helpless face. I've often given him money over all these years and he's been wasteful while spending it. Well, you can push him to find himself a wife to help him manage his life as soon as possible, though, said Tang Xiao smilingly. Else, I'm afraid you gotta take care of him for a lifetime. Tang and secretly clenched her fists and replied with a dead serious expression. I'll definitely push him to find himself a wife. <laughs> Dot. Tang Xiao chuckled and said, Okay, okay, get some rest now. 
I need to read this intel about the Dark Shaman Clan to make some plans. Anyway, would you like me to head to that coconut plantation, Grandmaster? asked Tang and all of a sudden. You're setting the trap there. In case Sinquo sends his men there tonight, Swa Daquan and his men perhaps won't be able to deal with them. Besides, there are Zwa Ching and her two children. They could be in danger. There's no need for you to go there now. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, I'll personally lead our men there once I'm done devising the plan tonight. Also, I assigned Jean Shi's team to go there when we were in the Dark Wind branch. I believe they'll be able to make Zwa Ching and his two children stay out of trouble even if Sinquo's men arrive there earlier than us. At the Dark Shaman Clan location. Sinquo hastily draped his coat over him as he walked out of a building. As he came to the entrance of the Dark Shaman Clan, dozens of people had already gathered there. All of them were dressed in black with magic staffs and cold weapons. More than a dozen cars came from afar, and when they stopped at the gate, Sinquo and the men immediately boarded the cars before they quickly headed toward the distance. Several minutes later, the dark shaman's patriarch, Sinquo, silently appeared at the gate, looking grim and icy. He took out a sharp dagger and threw it to the left side of the entrance. A black mist suddenly appeared at his left side as a white-haired old man came out of the black mist and caught the dagger. Follow them. That child, Singluin, may be incompetent, but he's still my son. If Sinquo really wants to kill him, you must immediately act and save him when he's in the most critical situation. What if Singluin defeats Sinquo and becomes the final winner? asked the white-haired old man. Singchuo shook his head and asked back, Do you think he's got what it takes to defeat Sinquo? I know that it's unlikely, but there's nothing absolute in this world either. The white-haired old man shook his head and said, unforeseen accidents that lead to an unexpected situation may still happen. Besides, Singluin seems to have some helpers from China. Although we don't yet know clearly about these people, China has had many hidden experts for countless generations. It will be Singluo who will suffer losses if the people invited by Singluin are very strong. Singchuo touched his nose deep in thought. Then, he nodded and said, you're right. There's some truth in what you said. China does have too many powerful people, so we've got no choice but to guard against any contingencies. All right, take 13 shaman protectors with you. You should be able to deal with the circumstances should any accidents occur. The white-haired old man nodded and took the dagger as he turned into a black mist, quickly vanishing in front of Singchuo. At the coconut plantation. Zwa Daquan was leaning by the window while looking at the dark scenery outside. Dark haze filled his heart, even though his daughter had come with his two adorable two grandsons. Furthermore, he was experiencing a feeling of restlessness that was getting more intense as time went by. It was a feeling he had never had for more than a decade. About a decade ago, he had relied on this mysterious sixth sense he possessed to detect any possible dangers brought by the Huang ahead of time. It was also the reason why he had been able to flee in advance, eventually saving himself from being killed by the Huang clansmen. But the feeling he had this time was far more intense than it was a decade ago. It was as though the scythe of the Grim Reaper had been placed around his neck, making it difficult to breathe and causing him to be restless. What could be the reason? The thought kept plaguing his mind before he finally came to one conclusion. His hunch told him that the danger he would face soon was related to Tang Xiao, the man who came to his place with her daughter today. It was even very likely that it was also related to the Huang family. This won't do. There's no way I can sit still and wait for death to come. I gotta make preparations in advance and send Qing and my two grandsons to a way to run from this place first. After that, I gotta go to some spot in the vicinity for surveillance and observation. Right at 400 sharp, after Zwa Daquan had secretly sent his daughter and grandsons away, the dreadful sensation he had turned more intense. It was as if he was being stared at by a venomous serpent that could bite him at a moment's notice. It was the kind of bite that was very fatal and deadly. Chapter 983, Expressing Goodwill? Old Man Ange 
Just as Zhu Dequan appeared in another manner more than 10 kilometers away, a 50-plus something old man he had messaged came and appeared in front of him. The old man Ange looked puzzled and asked, It's so unusual for you to come here at this time, Boss Zhu. What happened? Would you mind letting me take refuge in your place? Ange asked Zhu Dequan with a solemn expression. I got a hunch that somebody is monitoring me and that my place will be quite messed up tonight. The old man Ange was silent for a while and then nodded. You saved my life before and you've helped several times, so it's my turn to help you this time. But you also know that I'm not as strong as your well-trained troops. I only got a little more than a dozen men here. Just letting me take refuge in your place is already the greatest help for me, Ange, replied Swa Dequan gratefully. I can't say thanks now, but I'll definitely do it properly after I make it through this crisis safely. Nah. There's no need for that between us, Boss Swa, said the old man. Anyway, I got a secret room to hide some things here. Do you want to hide there with your men? I won't leak anything to those who come to find you should there be any. I've not come here to hide, Ange. Swa Dequan shook his head and said, I just need to stay in your place to have a look at those who are gonna make a mess in my place. Besides, even if I can hide tonight, there's no way I can feel safe in the days to come. Well, can I go to your water tower? I need to go up there. The old man Ange looked dull for a moment before he patted his head and said, Damn. How come I forgot the water tower is also a good place to hide? Come on, I'll take you there myself. That spot seems very unsafe, but it's the safest spot in my place indeed. Ten minutes later, Swa Dequan led tens of his men to the water tower. The space in the tower was very small, and Swa Dequan only took a few of his trusted men into it above, while the rest stayed below. The taste of waiting, with restlessness overwhelming your whole being, was never a good feeling. While waiting, a stalwart middle-aged man using binoculars suddenly had his expression change and he reported, Boss, a convoy seems to be heading to our coconut plantation. There are thirteen of them, and each is full of people. With a changed expression, Swa Dequan grabbed the binoculars in his hand and aimed towards the reported direction. He immediately saw that the said convoy consisted of thirteen cars. At this moment, his eyes looked as though they were blazing flames as he cursed in a low voice, the young divine doctor, huh? What a shitty fart. And so is his magnificent Tang Corporation. You got a good life, Tang Xiao, so I never thought that you'd be just a hunting dog for the Huang. The enemy this time should be the Huang's men he brought. An ordinary-looking middle-aged man beside him put down the binoculars and said, I don't think those people are Chinese, boss. They shouldn't be the lackeys of the Huang. Those men in the cars are new faces, but they should be Thais from their appearance. Also, I just looked around and I haven't seen anyone from Tang Xiao's group who have come to our coconut plantation today. It can't be. I have no other enemies besides the Huang. Zhuo Dequan shook his head and said, These people are definitely up to no good, and I can't think of anyone else except the Huang family. But if they are indeed the Huang clansmen, Tang Xiao would definitely not be so stupid to come ahead of time with the young lady. It's just kinda unreasonable to make us alert. The middle-aged man argued. His argument made Zhu Dequan frown. He thought about it for a moment and then nodded. Your reasoning is sound, but the convoy has stopped at the gate of our coconut plantation. If they are not the dogs of the Huang, then who could they possibly be? Kanaja's men? It's very unlikely. The relation between I and him is just due to the money he lent to me with no grudge whatsoever. He won't proactively come here and take me as an enemy. The man concurred with a nod. As he raised his binoculars and observed the scene in the distance, his expression suddenly shifted and said, Have you noticed the weird attire these people are wearing, boss? The most peculiar thing is the things in their hands. It seems like they are holding cold weapons. That's bizarre indeed. The scene made Zwa Dequan frown deeper. A puzzled and incomprehensible look on his face was quickly becoming much more evident. 
If these people were really to strike him with these cold weapons, there was only one possibility. These people were all martial artists. Two worn-out cars were driving fast on a certain empty street of Bangkok. With a look of surprise and amazement on his face, Tang Xiao sat in the second car and received a phone call from Jean Shur. This was due to Zhu Quan's foresight ability, a variable he didn't expect. The man had sent his daughter and two grandsons away to other places the same night and then took his men to take refuge in the nearby estate. We got traffic police blocking the road in front, Grand Master. Tang Guang, who was sitting in front, whispered all of a sudden. Seriously, is this a normal occurrence? asked Tang Xiao with squinted eyes. From my little knowledge about Bangkok, traffic police shouldn't close the road unless there's a big incident. Tang Guang shook his head and said, doing so at 4 a.m. is rather peculiar. So you mean they are coming for us? asked Tang Xiao. The chance is very likely. Tang Guang nodded. Tang Xiao went silent for a moment. He then suddenly turned his head to look at Singluin, asking, Can you deal with the traffic police in front? It should be no problem, but I'm afraid that I'd expose our whereabouts. Singluin hesitantly replied, The constellation of forces in Bangkok is rather complicated, and every traffic policeman could be an informer for others. But there's one man who could help to deal with it. Of course, that's as long as he doesn't leak our whereabouts to anyone else. Who's this man? asked Tang Xiao. Kanaja, answered Singluin. The revelation made Tang Xiao frown. His arrival in Bangkok was a secret and Kanaja was the last man he wanted to find out about it since this man had a good relationship with Singluin's father. The latter was obvious to be partial to Singguo. In case Kanaja informed Singluin's father of his arrival, then it was very likely that Singguo would receive the news right away. Is there any other way beside it? asked Tang Xiao with a frown. I got no other idea but that. Singluin shook his head. Tang Xiao was a bit disappointed. Singluin's ability being this abysmal to deal with such a problem was really out of his expectations. He hesitated for a moment before deciding not to contact Kanaja. It wouldn't be too late to contact this man should they have a clash with these traffic police me later. The two cars then stopped in front of the roadblock. Tang Xiao didn't let Singluin get out the car, instead, he walked out with Tang Guang towards the policeman. With a smile on his face, he then greeted, Hello, police officer. It's so late, you haven't rested yet? Isn't it too much hard work for you? The first police officer, a middle-aged man, looked at the two cars several meters away. Then, his eyes shifted to Tang Xiao. It's really hard indeed, but it's an order from above that we must obey. May I know who you are? We need to inspect your cars. Tang Xiao swiftly took out two stacks of dollar bills from his interspatial ring and quickly gave it to the middle-aged policeman, smilingly saying, please accept these tens of thousands USD as my appreciation for everyone's hard work then. Anyhow, we're in a hurry here. Could you let us pass? The middle-aged policeman hurriedly returned the money back. Then he took out his mobile phone and looked at the screen before asking, Are you Mr. Tang Xiao? Tang Xiao's expression changed as he asked in a deep tone, How do you know me? Please don't misunderstand us, Mr. Tang, said the policeman. Someone entrusted me a message for you. He said that a powerful man called Sinkuo is currently looking for you. Also, more than a dozen cars just passed by an hour ago, which were Sinquo and his men. Then tell me who's the man who entrusted you with this message, asked Tang Xiao with a frown. Kanaja, answered the middle-aged man in a whisper. Tang Xiao's expression shifted and he inquired again, how did he know that I've come to Bangkok? Mr. Kanaja told me that you'd ask this question and he wanted me to explain to you that Mr. Shinkwa just visited him recently hoping that he'd help him investigate your whereabouts, explained the policeman. That's why Mr. Ken assigned his men to be stationed in all the streets in Bangkok. As a matter of fact, Mr. Ken has also found out where you stayed last night. He didn't visit you then since it was inconvenient, so he had to resort to this method to inform you. I see. 
Kanaja truly has quite supernatural power here, doesn't he? said Tang Xiao with a faint smile. I didn't expect that he could find our whereabouts so quickly. It seems that he's more powerful than I had imagined. All right, please tell him that Tang Xiao will remember this favor and that I require his help to bring us to our destination. I'll pass your message on to Mr. Ken right away, said the policeman. Tang Xiao returned to the car as a cool light flashed in his eyes. He had been looking down on Kanaja's ability and power in Bangkok indeed. But the arrow had left the bow and couldn't be retracted. Hence, he could only leave it to chance. Hopefully Kanaja wouldn't leak his whereabouts, otherwise, the upcoming battle would probably end up more difficult. At the Coconut Plantation Sinkwo brought 40-plus men with him after the cars had been parked in the vicinity. They quickly approached the manor silently and then sneakily jumped up the wall. There were more than a dozen guard dogs that moved about vigilantly in the garden, yet none of them were able to detect the many people with murderous intent in the dark fog drifting in front of them. When are we going to strike them, young master? Just wait a bit. We need to scout the situation inside first. Sinquo acted very carefully and was prudent even though he had bought the intel from the Darkwind organization for fear that he would fall into the enemy's trap. He had sent some people to investigate Tang Xiao's identity, but the findings he had received resulted in a dreadful feeling inside him. His trash younger brother, Singluan, was not someone he was afraid of. It was the experts around Tang Xiao that gave him this much dread. Who are you? Suddenly, an alarming voice sounded out and a gun was fired. Jean Sher, disguised as Hua Daquan's subordinate, unceasingly opened fire and immediately ran to the back after firing a series of shots. In just a few breaths, he had already disappeared from Sinquo and his men's line of sight. Catch him! Sinquo, who wanted to figure out the situation in this coconut plantation, ordered without hesitation. Chapter 984, The Eve of the Storm Sporadic gunshots echoed over the coconut plantation. Yet, it was as though the scythe of the Grim Reaper activated every time gunshots were heard as they harvested the life of the person shot. In just a few minutes, six big men with heavy murderous auras were killed, falling into their own pool of blood. Fuck. Sinquo could only helplessly look at his men that were constantly being targeted by the mysterious sniper. His eyes were as though spewing out flames. The anger on his face quickly turned into a ferocious expression and the killing aura around him turned more intense. He had investigated the men under Singluan, and there was no outstanding sniper such as this one. More so that the other party was nothing but assassins from all over the world. None of them was a practitioner of his dark shaman clan. The marksmanship of the enemy is too accurate, boss. He also keeps moving, so we can't lock onto his position. Hurd, who was wearing a tinted camouflage suit and held a sniper rifle, reported with a scowl on his face. He used to be the ace sniper of the Golden Flame mercenary group and a death reaper on the battlefield who had killed countless enemies. Encountering another sniper who was able to suppress him was a very horrific feeling for him. A chilling light flashed in Sinquo's eyes. He was well aware of the many abilities possessed by Hurd. Yet, the fellow was unable to lock onto the enemy at all. It was obvious that the enemy's strength was formidable. Cease attacking and immediately investigate the owner of this coconut plantation. I want accurate intel in 30 minutes. A few kilometers away from the scene, Zwa Daquan, who was hiding atop the water tower, stared dumbly at the scene in front of him through his binoculars. Never in his wildest dreams would a gun battle occur in his coconut plantation, nor would so many enemies come to attack it. The most surprising thing was that there was also a mysterious sniper that was able to deter and force the enemies back. Who the hell is this guy? He put down his binoculars and turned to look at the few confidants around him, inquiring. The men around him exchanged glances and shook their heads at the same time. The scene had likewise made them shocked because they had already evacuated everyone in the plantation. It had simply been deserted. Furthermore, although they were also skilled men who had encountered powerful figures, 
none of them could be compared to this sniper who was in a killing spree and claiming a human life with each bullet shot out. There's no way he's one of us, boss, whispered a middle-aged big man. Sua De Quan looked again with his binoculars and carefully observed the scene. Then he said, this man is using a bunker to cover himself, but his concealment ability is extraordinary. Only a true expert would be able to do it. All I can say is that we're just unlucky if this incident has nothing to do with us. We got someone hiding in our plantation, but we never found him, yet his enemy found him and now came for revenge. The middle-aged man nodded, the chance is very likely otherwise. Bang, bang. Suddenly, the gunshots sounded again in the coconut plantation. This time, however, the shootings didn't come from one person, but four or five men at the same time. Above all, the shooters were not the dozens of people who attacked, but people who were defending the coconut plantation. In that instant, the middle-aged man's face turned extremely nasty. Even Zwa Daquan wore a look of disbelief. The fact that more than four people were in his coconut plantation simply overthrew his speculations, smacking him in the face. What the hell is going on there? Who exactly are those fellas? Sua Daquan was completely stunned. His hands that held the binoculars slightly shivered. Deep inside the coconut plantation, Jean Sher was hiding behind the window of a building as he picked up his earphones and spoke. Everyone, boss is coming in 30 minutes, so we shall sweep them over to pick off as many as possible. Hold them in their spot and leave no chance to advance or leave. The intel the boss just sent me says that it's Sing Luo who has come here with his direct subordinates. Our mission will be half done if we can remove them. Chilling light gleamed in Moa's eyes as he said coldly, if it wasn't for the boss's order, we would just completely annihilate them directly. Anyway, where the heck is Shue Sha? He didn't appear in his assigned spot just now. Whoosh. A figure suddenly flickered lightning fast and then appeared next to them. It was Shue Sha as he joined the conversation with visible killing intent in his eyes, whispering, I got a bunch of mysterious company near my position before. They should be the dark shaman experts planning an ambush in the dark. I can sense that some of them kinda gave me a threatening feeling. <laughs> they must be the manpower Sinkwo has arranged to ambush us. Jean Sher coldly snorted and said, Shwe Sha, keep an eye on them and inform us at once the moment they take action. Our present task is to hold them up and buy some time, guys. Mo Og pulled his pistol out and coldly said, let's give them a warning and let them know that we've found them. With that said, he fired his gun several times towards the hiding position in the southeast of Jeanshire, and then quickly moved to another position and appeared by another window. In the southeast, behind lush greenery and trees, more than a dozen ghost-like shadows were hiding. Their whole bodies were covered by blurry fog with auras that made the temperature in the surroundings drop several degrees. A white-haired old man in a black robe, singly, had his eyes glued to the front. His eyes were as though able to penetrate the darkness and able to see the dangers of hiding in the dark from the building in front. Hung. As a few bullets came from that direction towards his position, Singly quickly waved his long sleeves. Several blobs of black fog instantly appeared and wrapped the bullets, making them float in the air over four meters away. Leave this spot. They've found our position. In that instant, the dozen ghostly figures quickly retreated back behind the shade of the tree without any sound. Time passed by and the situation fell into a deadlock. Half an hour later, two cars came and parked on the road over five kilometers away from the coconut plantation. Tang Xiao and the rest quickly came out, followed by Singluin and the dozens of men he had trained, quickly lurking toward the coconut plantation. Keep moving while covert. As they approached the coconut plantation, several cars parked by the roadside entered Tang Xiao's line of sight, along with several of Singluo's men with firearms guarding them. Singluin came to Tang Xiao's side and whispered, What do we do next? With killing intent gleaming in his eyes, Tang Xiao answered, We'll find out the specific position of the enemy first, 
and then inform Jean Sher's team in the coconut plantation to attack them on both sides at the same time to kill Singuo and his men as quickly as possible. None of them must be left alive. I concur. These guys are all Singuo's trusted men, so let's kill them all. Singluin firmly nodded. My side strength has progressed steadily as of late. We're at least several times stronger than before. Even if some freakish old monster in our clan is there to protect Sinkwo, we'll definitely be able to hold and neutralize them here. Tang Xiao nodded in response and then said to Tang Guang, confirm the enemy's position, especially the spot where Sinkwo is hiding. Kill him if you find any chance, but return at once to report to me if you've got no chance. We'll strike them in five minutes. Understood. Tang Guang nodded and replied. His figure then flickered and instantly disappeared into the darkness in front like a flashing arrow. Two minutes later, he returned back to Tang Xiao's front and shook his head. Sinquo has got many experts around him, so I can't kill him. Furthermore, there are 40 plus men at our 11 o'clock, a few of them have firearms while the rest have magic staffs and cold weapons. They should be the Dark Shaman Clan's experts. I also found more than a dozen men towards our one o'clock. They are able to hide their presence very well and should be more powerful than the experts around Sinquo. Having said that, Tang Guang took out a piece of paper and handed it to Tang Xiao, continuing his report, and just made a sketch of an old man who leads the one o'clock group. Singluin observed the sketch a few times before his pupils suddenly contracted, an expression of hatred filling his eyes. He then said in a deep voice, I know him. Nobody in my clan doesn't know this man. He's Singli, my father's right-hand man and also my third uncle. He's known by my clansmen as the second most powerful expert in the clan. It seems that our guess is correct, Mr. Tang. My father is really on Sinquo's side, or else Sinquo wouldn't be able to make this old man move with his identity. We guessed that it would turn out like this before, now it's been confirmed, said Tang Xiao indifferently. Sinquo wants your life, and he shall die. If these people sent by your father also want to kill you, I don't think that keeping them alive would have any advantage for you, Singluin. The statement made Singluin hesitate and he said with a bitter face, he's still my father in any case. He probably doesn't want to kill me since he didn't come here. Let's just wait after we get rid of Sinquo. I'll personally return to the Dark Shaman Clan to resolve this issue with him. Tang Xiao could only sigh inwardly before nodding, I understand. He's your father after all. Although the pain of killing your own father will eventually be buried in your heart. Some of the pains will never be erased no matter what. All right, let's get rid of Sinquo and his men first before dealing with that. Five minutes passed by. Tang Xiao then contacted Jin Shir with his mobile phone and issued an attack order. The moment after, Jin Shir's group of eleven in the building deep inside the coconut plantation moved out lighting fast towards Sinquo's position, putting away their guns and unleashing their respective immortal sword. In just half a minute, they had already killed six men assigned by Sinquo to keep an eye on them. Bastard. A hoary and furious shout belonging to an old man in a black robe was heard. He quickly swung the staff in his hand as a layer of black fog gradually emerged in the surroundings. Slash them. The black crazily converged and instantly condensed into a black long blade. As the surrounding space distorted. The black saber covered by the black haze flickered and appeared before M.O.A. and Jean Shir in an attempt to slash their bodies, in the blink of an eye. Rainbow sword, break. M.O.A.'s leg stepped forward, and sword energy burst out from his immortal sword, causing a gale that smashed forward to clash with the black saber. Chapter 985, The Suffering of Bystanders the sheer power of the sword chi powerfully swept forward, yet the black fog was extremely viscous. Despite being slashed by the sword chi, it quickly condensed again. The sword's length, however, lessened by half and its power plummeted. Just as the black-robed old man was full of confidence and thought that M.O.A. and Jean Shir could be killed at once, the sword chi suddenly turned and shot at him. 
If it wasn't for his swift reflexes in waving his staff to block the sword chi, he would have been pierced by the sword energy. Boom. The gem inlaid on the staff exploded and shattered to pieces before scattering them on the ground. The black-robed old man only felt his hand go numb in that instant while his blood and energy inside his body turned chaotic. Lame. Jinshir sneered as the immortal sword shot forward from his hand, bringing with it a blazing flame to crush the black saber. As the black saber turned into a black mist, it finally collapsed and dispersed in front of them, while the unstoppable killing momentum flooded forward and burned the black-robed old man the moment after. Draw back fast. At the same time, the other four black-robed old men floated away and joined forces to form a wall made of black fog in front of the immortal sword. A black bubble quickly floated from the surroundings and formed a black cyclone to contain the explosion. It acted as an obstruction and was finally able to stop the immortal sword's advance in front of them. It's a magical weapon. The face of the second black-robed old man on the left changed. A greedy look appeared on his face. He quickly dashed to the immortal sword in front and wrapped his palm with a layer of black mist and swiftly grabbed the sword's hilt. A dozen of meters away from him, Jean Sher was stunned upon seeing the scene before him. However, his expression turned strange the moment after. Right as the black-robed old man grasped the immortal sword's hilt, his lips ever slightly moved, and he instantaneously casted a cantrip to unleash the energy inside the immortal sword he had refined for nearly a year. Suddenly, a dazzling radiance erupted from his sword. Swift and powerful sword energy wrapped in flames instantly burst out in all directions from the immortal sword. The blast caused the black miscovered hand of the black-robed old man who stood before the immortal sword to instantly combust, turning it into ashes in the blink of an eye. Puff. The man coughed up a mouthful of blood with a disastrous face. The instant after, the flaming sword chi struck his chest. The blazing flame burned him inside out instantly, turning him into a pile of ashes just as the other black-robed men rushed over. Tens of meters away from the scene, Sinqua wore a look of disbelief watching his elder guardian get turned into ashes. He'd had five guardian elders protecting him since his childhood. They were the ones who had been directing him in cultivation as he grew step by step until the present. They acted as the select few people he trusted the most. And yet, the most powerful second elder who loved him the most just died like this? Clenching his fists tightly with furious rage in his eyes, Sinquo quickly pulled out a crescent saber from his waist, waving it and shouting, Kill them all. Kill these bastards. Spare Singluan's life, for I'll be the one who kills him. I'll make him taste suffering and torture before he dies. Slash, slash, puff, puff. Just as his voice left his lips and the dozen men around him had yet to move, however, Seven men behind him had their throats slashed and their hearts pierced silently. Enemy attack. The black-robed middle-aged man's face enormously changed. He shouted loudly while dashing to the side to avoid the sword that had cut off his arm. The scene made Cinquo E.S. expression drastically change. A chill ran down his spine as he saw tens of figures appear behind him. He saw Tang Xiao and Singluan, who he hated the most, along with his subordinates. Yet, what made him unable to believe it was the especially powerful aura gave off by the five guardian elders and the petite woman, around Singluan. Kill them. However, Singquo couldn't care less about anything now. One of his guardian elders had been killed. It was just like adding fuel to a flame, causing his rage to blaze even more. A contemptuous look was seen on Tang Xiao's face. If it weren't for the consideration to prevent any of these men from escaping and leaving behind any future dangers, let alone Sinquo and his men in front, these people would still pose no threat to him even if their number and strength doubled. After all, he was also an expert who could contend with powerhouses at the Golden Core stage. More so that he still had Tang Guang and Tang An who also possessed similar cultivation levels. Singluan, you and your men can deal with Sinquo. I'll deal with the rest so that we can get rid of them as fast as possible. 
Tang Xiao quickly glanced at Singluin and said with a cold voice. A hideous grin appeared on Singluin's face. He led the feminine woman and the five black-robed guardian elders to aggressively storm over towards Singquo. Prior to this event, neither he nor his men were able to contend with Singquo and his subordinates. But since had a deal with Tang Xiao and obtained the pills, their powers had advanced by leaps and bounds, making them now a level more powerful compared to them. Further, one of the guardian elders who protected Singquo had been killed, while the other four were also being engaged by Jin Shi's team. This time was literally a golden opportunity. Kill them. The more you kill, the bigger the reward you'll get after this battle. I'm not a miser, so give me your all if you want to get more benefits. Attractive rewards will indeed attract those who are brave enough to take the risk. Tens of people under Singluin rushed forward, although their strength was several levels weaker. But they were aware that they had the support from Tang Xiao and his men. That spirit made them able to get the upper hand as they engaged the enemy. A few kilometers away from the scene, on the tens of meters high water tower, Sua Daquan was utterly dumbfounded as he watched the scene. He had his share of seeing some powerful people such as some ability users with mysterious powerful abilities he had met a few years ago. And yet, the abilities of those people were nothing to speak of compared to the people engaged in combat before his eyes. It was like he was watching some magical foreign blockbuster, no. The scene now was even much better than those movies. The scene he was witnessing was like a battle between troops of celestial immortals and devils, clashing as they mounted the clouds and rode the mist, causing a bloody fight that created flashes of lightning and the rumbling of thunder. All these scenes gave him a chill that froze his whole body. Bo. Be boss, this Tang. The middle-aged man who stood next to him stutteringly spoke. Speak properly for fuck's sake, will you, growled Swa Daquan as he cursed at him. I know how shocking this battle scene before you is. I'm sure they are humans, but humans with magical abilities. The middle-aged man gulped and quickly said, it's not that boss. It's Mr. Tang, the man who escorted the young lady previously. This made Swa Daquan's face slightly change, and he asked with a deep voice, where is he? The man quickly pointed to one direction and said, look at that side. The one wearing black casual attire is Mr. Tang. I still remember that it's the attire he wore when he came to our coconut plantation yesterday. Sua so Daquan followed the direction of his finger and carefully observed the spot for ten seconds. He finally spotted Tang Xiao among the combatants. However, Tang Xiao looked inconspicuous and didn't show any terrifying action at all. With daggers in his hands, he kept moving around randomly among the combatants in the fight. No way. With contracted pupils, Sua Daquan's expression turned into a horrified one. He kept observing Tang Xiao's stance as he moved around smoothly. He noticed he was simply in a killing spree as he harvested the lives of all combatants there. The two daggers in his hands were as though the Grim Reaper's scythe, constantly slashing his enemy's neck and piercing their hearts. He was even able to assist the people on his side, reducing their losses. Boss, I just don't understand one thing, said the middle-aged man suddenly. Mr. Tang clearly left yesterday. So why did he and his men appear in our coconut plantation tonight? Also, you can see that they are now using our plantation as their battlefield causing the buildings and the trees to be severely damaged. If both sides keep battling like this, it will be us who'll suffer great losses, regardless of the winner. The moment Sua Daquan saw Tang Xiao among these people, he already understood the truth of the matter. A wry and bitter smile appeared on his face as he replied with a helpless expression, It's I who must be blamed. This situation wouldn't have happened if I didn't refuse him from staying in our coconut plantation. It's just his way to pay me back, albeit indirectly. I don't understand. The man replied with a puzzled look. While watching the battle of the two sides, Sua Daquan let out a forced smile and said, It was I who had suspected this solemn big boss of the magnificent Tang Corporation. I doubted him, wondering why he had to enter Bangkok illegally and so secretly. 
I mistakenly thought that he was the Huang family's hunting dog, who wanted to stay in our place in order to wait for the reinforcements of the Huang and then deal with me from the inside. It turns out that everything is off the mark given the present situation. He has enemies in Bangkok, a very powerful one. Don't you see familiar faces among his enemies there? One of them is Sinquo, the eldest prince of a mysterious clan here. Tang Xiao and his men likely covertly came to Bangkok with the purpose of dealing with this man. Also, Tang Xiao must have had no place to stay here when he first arrived yesterday, so he accepted Qing's invitation and then came to our place. Yet it was I who refused to give some temporary lodging here. In that instant, several trusted men under Zhu Daquan understood everything. They exchanged dismayed glances at each other and were speechless for a long time. Doesn't this mean that they are nothing but bystanders who will suffer from the battle? The current situation they were in was simply like they were innocent bystanders who got implicated and suffered because of others' actions. Furthermore, it was also a deliberate action to make them implicated in such a situation. It wouldn't have happened if Swede Daquan were polite and gave them shelter yesterday. So, what should we do now, boss? asked the middle-aged man in a whisper. What else can I do? asked Swede Daquan back with a forced smile. Nothing but wait and see. Their battle is not the likes of something we can meddle in to begin with. But if Tang Xiao ends up as the winner, I'll personally apologize to him.